Derivatives of Inverse Trigonometric Functions Level 1 In the previous video, we learned how to find derivatives of functions where the dependent and the independent variables were related implicitly. Now we use this new technique to find the derivative of inverse trigonometric functions. If you're rusty on this concept, I advise you to check the video on inverse trigonometric functions in the pre-calculus section. Assuming that inverse trigonometric functions are differentiable, and in fact, if f is any one-to-one -one differentiable function, such as f of x equals sine of x, it can be proved that its inverse, arch sine of x, is also differentiable, except where its tangents are vertical. This is possible because the graph of a differentiable function has no corner or kink. So if we reflect it about the line y equals x, the graph of its inverse function also has no corner or kinks. Recall the definition of arc sine. This function accepts values of x, and its corresponding output represents the angle, typically in radians. Remember during your pre-calculus class that you actually used this function to find angles when you had knowledge of the measure of the opposite side and the hypotenuse of a right triangle. In contrast to the sine function where its inputs are angles and its outputs are ratios between 1 and negative 1 inclusive. So taking the graph of sine of x and reflecting it about the line y equals x, we have the following graph. Notice that we restricted the domain in order to make this relation a function. In other words, it passes the vertical line test. In addition, notice that the domain and range are switched. That is to say that the value of x, the domain, on sine of x becomes the value of y, the range, for arc sine. And the values of y, the range, for sine of x becomes the values of x, the domain, for arc sine. Now looking at the graph of arc sine, we further define it to be restricted to quadrants 1 and 4 in the unit circle. In other words, the corresponding range of arc sine is between negative pi over 2 and pi over 2. Okay, now let's use y to represent the dependent variable and x to represent the independent variable. If this is the case, we can write the arc sine function as follows. Taking the sign of both sides, we can rewrite the expression by remembering that the composition of a function and its inverse undo each other, leaving you with the independent variable. So you end up with the following expression. Sine of y equals x, where the values of y is restricted to the interval negative pi over 2 and pi over 2, quadrants 1 and 4 on the unit circle. So the purpose of that manipulation was to rewrite the function into a relation defined implicitly. So now we can use the techniques from the previous video to find a derivative. The first step to take a derivative of implicit functions is to take a derivative of both sides. So a derivative of sine of y is going to be equal to cosine of y times y prime. The derivative of x is just equal to 1. Second step is to solve for y prime. So solving for y prime, we have that the derivative is going to be equal to 1 over cosine of y. Now, in order to rewrite cosine of y in terms of x, we need to substitute cosine of y when, with an expression in terms of x. The way we do this is by using a familiar identity. Specifically, cosine squared of y plus sine squared of y equals 1. One of the Pythagorean identities back from pre-calculus class. So here, what we want to do is solve for cosine of y. So doing that, we have cosine squared of y equals 1 minus sine of y squared. And taking the square root of both sides, we have that cosine of y is equal to positive negative 1 minus sine of y raised to the power of 2. Now here, we have two answers, a positive and negative square root. Now which one should we use? Well, if we revert back to the definition of sine inverse, sine inverse is defined in quadrants 1 and 4, specifically between negative pi over 2 to pi over 2. In those quadrants, cosine of y attains positive values. So it makes sense to use the positive square root. So doing so and substituting values for y, the value for y from our original expression was actually y equals sine inverse of x. Carrying out the substitution, we have the expression 1 over the square root of 1 minus sine of sine inverse of x raised to the power of 2. So the composition of a function and its inverse undo each other, leaving you with the independent variable x. So it turns out that the final derivative of arc sine or sine inverse is equal to 1 over the square root of 1 minus x squared. The derivative of inverse cosine can be found in a similar fashion. The derivative of arc cosine, also known as inverse cosine, can be found as follows. We take the cosine of both sides, so we have the following expression, and now that we have an implicit function, we take a derivative of both sides, so the derivative of cosine of y is going to be equal to negative sine of y times y prime, and the derivative of x is just 1. Solving for y prime, we have the derivative is going to be equal to negative 1 over sine of y.
Once again, we need to substitute sine of y with an expression in terms of x. Just like the previous problem, what we want to do is use one of the Pythagorean identities to substitute sine of y with an appropriate equivalent expression. So sine of y is going to be equal to the square root of 1 minus cosine squared of y. Once again, we have two answers, positive and negative. And in order to choose which one to use, we need to go revert back to the definition of cosine inverse. Cosine inverse is defined in quadrants 1 and 2 in the unit circle. In other words, between 0 and pi. In this interval, and in these quadrants, sine of y attains a positive value. It makes sense to use the positive expression. So doing that, we have the negative of 1 over the square root of 1 minus cosine of cosine inverse of x raised to the power of 2. So once again, a function and its inverse undo each other, leaving you with an independent variable. So we have that the final derivative is equal to negative of 1 over the square root of 1 minus x squared. The derivative of tangent inverse and cotangent inverse can be found using the same procedure and reasoning. The derivative of cosecant and secant inverse depend on the definitions that are used for these functions. Let's find the derivative of inverse secant. We define secant inverse, or arc secant, as the number between 0 and pi, whose secant is x. We could differentiate secant inverse of x by using the same techniques that we use in finding arc sine and arc cosine, but there's a much easier way. Notice the following. If an angle has secant equal to x, then it has cosine equal to 1 over x. This means that arc secant of x is the same thing as arc cosine of 1 over x. So now we differentiate both sides with respect to x using the chain rule and the derivative of inverse cosine. The derivative of arc secant is what we're trying to find. In order to take a derivative of arc cosine, we apply the chain rule along with the power rule. We have the following expression. And instead of an expression, we have that the derivative of arc secant is equal to 1 over x squared times square root of 1 minus 1 over x squared. We can simplify the equation, but it has to be done carefully, since the square root of x squared is not equal to x when x is negative. So doing some algebraic manipulation, we could rewrite the denominator as follows. We add the fractions underneath the square root sign. So doing so, we have the following. We take the square root of the numerator and that of the denominator. We have the following. The expression in the denominator, the square root of x squared, you should remember this is the definition of the absolute value. So substituting the square root of x squared with the absolute value, we have the following expression. And here, notice that x squared over the absolute value of x is the same thing as just the absolute value of x. If you don't believe me, go ahead and try it out. Plug in some numbers and you'll find out that the expression x squared over the absolute value of x is the same thing as the absolute value of x. So substituting x squared over the absolute value of x with that of the absolute value of x, we have the final derivative of arc secant is equal to 1 over the absolute value of x times the square root of x squared minus 1. The derivative of inverse cosecant can be found in the same manner. I advise you to try it out as an exercise and compare it with the following table. So here we have the derivative of all the inverse trigonometric functions. Notice that the negative sign goes with the co-functions, specifically inverse cosine, cosecant, and cotangent. The inverse trigonometric functions that occur most frequently are inverse sine, cosine, and tangent. You can download a copy of all the derivatives learned so far for your own personal reference under the equation sheet section on the same site. In our next video, we will practice using these new derivative rules by going over some examples.